All right, how's it going, guys? I decided to do a video uh, showing off my slip joint collection. Uh, it has grown pretty substantially. Why can't I get this dog hair off of here, please? Can you leave? Thank you. Uh, it's grown pretty substantially uh, in the recent months. Uh, I started off with um, my Ohio River Jacks, and that was kind of my first introduction into the uh, modern slip joint world. And um, this is the one I carry most. This is the Warncliffe version in jigged titanium. Uh, this was my first introduction into modern traditional slip joints and really slip joints, period. Um, and after owning this for a while, I really started getting into slip joints in general, not just modern ones, but traditional ones as well. Uh, and then with the help of uh, a good buddy, I started learning more about the traditional slip joint world. And I got into some cases, some GECs, uh, and some other stuff, other uh, random brands. And uh, I think I have a pretty good variety here of traditional traditionals and modern traditionals. So let's just uh, take a look at them. They mostly all have slips, except these here on the edges. And a couple of them need to be remade um, slips, like my Jack Wolf. I don't like the one that it came with. Um, so I'm going to make my own for that one. Um, this was one of my first slips, and you can tell I have gotten much better um, with my leather work in just a, really a couple months. Um, so a couple of these uh, are old slips and need to be uh, redone. So let's just take it one by time, one at a time, and take a look at these knives. Actually, let's start on the corner here. This one's pretty cool because this is my first knife ever. And it's not technically a slip joint. It's a little lock back, but I'm, I'm putting it in here. Um, this was my very first knife. Not the exact specific knife, but this was the same exact knife I had um, as a kid. This was the first knife my dad ever gave me. And um, I didn't remember it for a long time until a couple months ago I saw a photo of it. And all the memories came rushing back. I was like, oh my gosh, that was the knife that my dad gave me when I was a little kid. And so I, I, had, to buy, I had to buy one. Um, it just brought back so many memories. And um, it's actually a pretty good little, it's like a, less than a $20 knife. Um, made in Portland, Oregon. Uh, it's a little locked back, but with a half stop, which is interesting. Um, plastic handle. I'm not even sure the blade steel. Nothing special at all. Um, mostly just nostalgic thing, but it, it's super light. It could be a little a keychain knife if you wanted it to be. Over here we have my Real Steel Solis. This is a modern traditional, almost a futuristic look, and the only one on the table here with the pocket clip. Um, I really like this thing. It's got a long fuller here for the pull, and you have a 45 degree half stop instead of a 90. Nice pop out to the full open position, and this is a very thin, very slicey uh, sheep's foot blade, or maybe a Warncliffe. Um, I really like this thing. Uh, it's in D2 blade steel, um, kind of futuristic looking, and a very good price. I think around 30 bucks for this baby. Yeah, it's a fun one. And they also make a premium version in titanium for 100 bucks. Next, this little old timer was given to me um, as a gift by a subscriber, and it's very interesting. Um, it's actually got, I guess you would call that a liner lock, I suppose? Um, but it's basically a, a slip joint with a liner lock because it still has a regular back spring too. Um, so you open it just like you would a, a regular slip joint, but it's locking, so that's kind of cool. Um, very, very small, thin blade, um, stainless steel. Is it? Uh... Yeah, it says USA right there. Cool. What are those letters beside that? I can't even read that. 180T? I don't know. Um, just kind of a cool, it's a, it's a straight old timer. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty neat. All right, let's get into these babies. All righty, where should we start? Uh, I'm not really gonna give the history of like when I bought these or anything. We're just gonna go through the knives themselves. Um, I guess let's start with this one. 
This slip here was made by Richter Knives. Um, good buddy, and I really like it. I mean, look at that cross-hatched texturing. I'm not sure if cross-hatched is what it's actually called, but it looks so cool, man. Um, purple stitching, and inside it, I have my GEC number 78, American Jack. This was my first GEC, and I love it very much because as soon as I uh, set eyes on this and held it in my hands, I knew that I was a big GEC fan. Um, you don't really understand the, the just the quality of a GEC until you have one. And uh, let me let Floki out of the room really quick so he stops whining. Come on. So this is what really started it all. Um, it's a two blader. We have um, a real nice spear point right here. I love this just classic spear point. It just, it looks so nice. It's so useful. Love the swedge up there. Um, you can see Tidiut Cutlery made in the USA right there. Nice half stops, nice pop closed. And we also have a pen blade as the secondary. Just a standard pen blade. Um, I also really like how um, GEC does their uh, numbering. So the first two letters are the uh, the, uh, the indicator of what knife it is, the number 78. Um, the two is the, uh, I think that's the, uh, so each blade shape has a number. Um, I think two is a spear point. So that was that's what the two is for. The next two is for the number of blades. We get two blades. And the last two numbers are the year. So this is 2017. I just think that's really cool. Uh, you get a lot of info out of this, just that series of numbers. And uh, you can tell a lot about your knife with just those. 1095 carbon steel. We got a little patina going on this baby. I just love this thing. It's beautiful. It's super well made. Got this elderberry. Um, what is it called? Let's see. Elderberry, yeah, elderberry jig bone covers. Beautiful, deep maroon color. I freaking love this thing. Next, we got a case. Sodbuster Jr. Uh, this was not my first Sodbuster Jr. It was my second. My first Sodbuster Jr., I got the synthetic uh, covered one. And I uh, didn't like it too much. Not only just the handle scales, but the... the uh, quality control on that one was really bad. So I ended up spending a little bit more on getting this bone one, which I like way, 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 way more. This is just, uh, this is a very good knife. Um, I really like everything, almost everything about it. This one came, eh, not centered, but believe it or not, more centered than the, uh, the last one I had. Um, this thing takes such a cool looking uh, patina. Look at those colors, man. That is just stunning. Look at that. <laughs> this is kind of my, my fruit knife. Uh, mangoes, usually. Um, this is a, a great all-around kind of uh, just all-around pocket knife. Um, it's comfortable, you know. It's a do-everything kind of blade. A little more belly than I typically like. Um, but like I said, it's, it's for, you know, light stuff. And um, it's very good for a, a fruit knife, which is what I use it for. In the USA, this is um, amber, uh, amber peach seed jig bone, I believe is what it's called. And um, yeah, just a very classic knife. No half stop, but you got a nice click there. A nice click on the open. Yeah, it's a classic. I feel like if you're into slip joints, you should have a Sodbuster Junior just because they're so classic. Next, we got one of my ORJs, my Ohio River Jacks from Traditional Pocket Knives. This is the Spear Point. Oh, that walk and talk, man. Um, this is one of the three blade shapes uh, that you can get in the Ohio River Jacks. There's also a sheep's foot and a Warncliffe, which I have the Warncliffe right up here. The sheep's foot one I ended up giving away to a friend, um, but I still have these two. The jigged titanium handle scales are no longer available, sadly. Uh, he sold out of them, and he's not making any more. So if you have one, you're lucky. Hold on to it. Um, but you can still get all the micarta ones. 
natural, green, black, and the three blade shapes. Go check them out, traditionalpocketknives.com, and use my code DUTY10 if you want to uh, get them even cheaper than they already are. This is a great all-around blade shape, you know. Uh, basically, you know, it's a, it's just a, a much larger version of just the classic spear point. Very, very similar. Just, uh, you know, fatter, bigger. It's a good one, man. Listen to this. Ooh, yeah. Next, we have uh, both of these camo slips are my Rosecraft blade knives. This is the Beaver Creek Barlow, I believe. Yeah. Beaver Creek Barlow. Let me wipe this down. The Beaver Creek Barlow. So, um, I saw on traditional pocket knives that he was uh, selling some uh, factory second models of these. And uh, so I picked one up. It's got a little crack there on the cover, you can see. Um, so I got it at a discount. And man, this is a really nice knife. These are made overseas, but man, oh man. I mean, the fit and finish is just excellent. Um, I mean, look at this, the polish on everything. It looks so, so good. D2 blade steel. The, the uh, walk and talk is nice and stiff. Not as stiff as this next one, but it's pretty good. Um, it's a Barlow kind of pattern. Um, you got the RC right there on the bolster. Good sheep's foot blade with this nice swedge right there. It just looks great. Um, they're thin behind the edge, and man, they're just so well made. I think this knife is around 50 bucks. And um, if you if you just look at the fit and finish compared to a case, you can just... Uh, there's a difference. This is a better made knife, and it's kind of sucks that it's made overseas and the more shitty one is made in the u.s but that's just how it goes sometimes you know um that's one of the reasons i stopped buying case knives is because their fit and finish is just it's subpar it really is um i've never gotten one that was perfectly centered there's always some kind of qc issue and uh you know when you look at something like this, compared to a case, you really realize just how, I, I don't know, it seems like they just don't really care about quality anymore, I don't know. And that's not all American companies, obviously. GEC is an American-made um, knife, and they are amazing, fit and finish, so it's just case. I wish they would step their game up and uh, get back to how they used to be. From what I hear, they used to have much better uh, fit and finish. Um, here is the next one. This is the Lusahatchee Jack. Same sort of covers, but we have a kind of a jig pattern in there with a shield. That's got a nice, really stiff uh, walk and talk on this baby. Uh, this is a real useful blade shape. Um, kind of how I like how the belly kind of comes down, down from the handle. It's real useful. Kind of a clip, almost like a straight clip blade, uh, blade shape. Um, same thing, man. Just, you know, great fit and finish. Great walk and talk. This one's got a long pull instead of the nail nick. Just looks real nice. They're both very uh, thin behind the edge and just really good purchases if you're looking for a traditional pocket knife um, that's made very, very well. If you don't uh, care that it's not made in the U.S., these are really good ones. Super, super nice. Next, we have my other case, and uh, this is one I really like. Um, this is the case Copperlock Warncliffe. As soon as I saw a photo of this thing, man, um, I had to have one. This thing is absolutely wicked looking. Look at that, dude. This is a knife I imagine like, um, I don't know, some bandit outlaw carrying uh, in cowboy times. Doesn't it look like something like, I don't know, Doc Holliday would carry or something like that? This thing is just wicked as hell. Um, it's very pointy, very uh, elongated Warncliffe blade here. Um, black, uh, that might be synthetic bone, I don't know, uh, covers. They make a different version of this knife with real bone and with like a, it's almost like a bluish bone. It looks so good. I'd like to get that one someday. 
Um, but we have the brass bolsters, um, and uh, it's a back lock, so not technically a slip joint, but it's still in here on the list. And uh, one of the reasons I really like this is not only the aesthetic, but uh, not all lockbacks have this nice snap shut. And I really like that. It's a back lock that has a nice snap. Um, it's also uh, pretty perfectly centered. Definitely the most perfectly centered case I've ever owned or even held in my hands. Um, it's just real. It's so classy, wicked looking. I love this thing. It's not super expensive either. I think 65 bucks around there. Yeah, the case copper lock. Super, super nice. All right, let's get up into some other... There's not all modern traditionals up here, but we got some. Um, here is my only Jack Wolf knife. This is the uh, Low Drag Jack. This is one uh, I picked up on a sale. It's got the um, black micarta handles, or uh, covers, I mean, and this pretty sweet looking, um, I don't know what you'd even call it, like a, a big belly spear point? I don't know. It's cool though. It's got a really deep hollow grind on it. Um, S90V blade steel also. Uh, now I did a cut test with this and I wasn't super impressed with how it held an edge. So I decided to put my own edge on the knife. I just did it yesterday. And oh boy, is it's very, very, very sharp. So um, I'm hoping now it will um, impress me more in the edge retention department. We will see. Um, I'm also thinking about adding an easy open notch on this knife because there's not quite enough to grab and I don't really like using the nail nick because the pull is really stiff on this knife and it almost it just kind of sucks using your fingernail. Um, so I'm thinking about cutting out in a, an easy open notch right here. I think it'll look good and I think it'll make me enjoy that using the knife more. Um, but you know it's a Jack Wolf. Um, the fit and finish is real nice. I mean, just, you know, perfect backspacer. Um, love the uh, the belt ground, the the uh, belt ground hollow grind in here. It just, it just looks nice, you know? It really does. Snappy walk and talk, perfectly centered. I like this teardrop kind of handle. Um, it's nice. It's a, it's one of the more medium sized uh, Jack Wolf knives, which I think is perfect for what I use them for. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty badass. Next in this little baby slip, we have another GEC. This is the little Rattler. Look at that. Really small, just kind of wicked worn cliff, man. Um, I sharpened this one recently on my. Uh, on my stones, it was my first time trying stones, and I made a mistake, folks. Look at this. See, that tip is barely coming up above uh, the inside there. Now, it was very, very close before I even touched it. So I feel like this was sharpened before I got it, because uh, I got it used. Um, and then I just took away a little too much material at the tip, and now the tip kind of shows. And it's not, you know, it's barely enough to like barely cut your skin, so it's not a real issue, and it lives in the slip anyways. But still, it kind of sucks. Um, I wish I had noticed that or had been paying attention better. But it's okay, it's definitely still usable. I just probably can't sell it if I ever wanted to. Um, but this is a cool one, man. It's got um, uh, my card of covers with the little shield. Um, it says a little rattler on the blade. And it's just a super, super thin behind the edge, kind of little, you know, package opener, whatever you want to do with it. Uh, precise utility cutter. Got a half stop. It's cool, man. It's really cool. Next, another GEC. We've got, this is the uh, my last GEC, and the one that I've been really loving recently, um, because I just got it recently, the number 56. Look at this, micarta covers, which look amazing. Love that shield. And I just put in an easy open notch on this baby. Didn't have it when I got it. This is kind of what I'm talking about putting in on this knife. I think uh, having that little notch right there will be nice. Um, 
this is a really cool one, man. Um, I love the pattern. Um, I love the, uh, the micarta just makes it look really just kind of classy. Really like that. Um, you know, classic spear point blade, real thin. I mean, all the GECs are so thin behind the edge that you could have like a kind of dull edge and it's still going to go through paper so easily. They're just that thin. It's crazy. Um, this one doesn't have a half stop. Um, but honestly, I, I thought it might bother me, but it doesn't really. I think I just, I like the knife so much that, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. It really doesn't. This is a badass knife, man. I just love how it looks. It, it makes me feel, uh, kind of nostalgic in a way. I don't know why. It just, uh, I really like it. All right, now, probably my most carried on this whole table. Uh, not only because I've had it the longest, but I mean, still to this day, I just carry it a lot. This is my Ohio River Jack Warren clip that we looked at at the beginning of the video. This is just, uh, this is kind of uh, a work knife, a slip joint work knife. This is so badass, man. It's, uh, you know, same with the spear point. Um, it's just, it's heavy duty, man. Um, it's just really badass. M390 blade steel. The walk and talk here is just amazing. Um, gosh, yeah. This is my most carried uh, slip joint for sure. And I love it. Next, one that uh, kind of kicked my ORJ out of the pocket for a while and still does is the Hedgehog. I freaking love the Hedgehog, man. Um, made by QSB, same uh, ones that made the uh, ORJ. And this is a traditional pocket knives exclusive. Um, same guy that designed these, Austin, um, has an exclusive with uh, QSB for this knife. And um, once you see the blade and how crazy thin it is, you understand how useful it is. It's basically like, I mean, it's not as thin as a straight razor, but the blade shape kind of reminds me of one. And it comes down so freaking thin. It's like this whole first quarter inch of the blade is just uber, uber thin. So utility cuts are great, even through thick material. Um, slicing is great. Pretty much everything, man. I mean, you don't, you don't have belly to work with if you need belly. Um, but it's a great uh, kind of knife to carry along with your primary knife, which is what I do with all these. These are all secondary carries. Um, you know, I carry a, I don't know, a shaman, for example, and then also one of these. Uh, the walk and talk here is real nice and poppy, and this thing slams closed harder than any of these knives. It absolutely slams home. I would hate for my finger to be in there. This is excellent. We got jigging on the titanium, contoured scales, it's comfy in hand. I love the looks of it, the long pull. Uh, M390 blade steel. This is just such a good knife, man. It looks good and it works really good. They're still available too, traditionalpocketknives.com. You can get one. And lastly, my Cubist Vanish. This is, uh, I don't want to say my favorite small slip joint, but it's up there with my favorite small slip joint. Um, this thing's so handy, you know? It's the size where you just slip it in somewhere and you don't even notice you have it. But the way, uh, you know, it's a sway back design, so it just fits in your hand so, so nicely with your pointer finger out here. You're just ready to do some cutting. Um, the action, walk and talk. Oh, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, this one, I, I paid an extra 10 bucks to get uh, engraved from his website. You can do that if you want. There's a couple patterns you can choose from. And uh, 20 CV blade steel, which is nice. Um, this is just awesome, man. I really, really love this little guy. It usually uh, lives in this organizer thing that I have uh, my uh, Fisher space pen in as well. And uh, these two are a really good combo. Just look at that. They're both small, they both look good, and this thing fits in my pocket really nicely. So that's it. That's my slip joints. Check them out.
I'm really happy. <laughs> I'm, I, you know, I was getting burnt out uh, on the knife world, and uh, thankfully I discovered the world of uh, slip joints, uh, mostly, primarily traditional slip joints. I I know nothing about, and um, it was really fun, kind of starting to learn about them and uh, get into uh, an uh, an area of the knife world that I was not familiar with, and um, I'm still learning about uh, about it all, and I look forward to uh, learning more. That's it. I love you guys. Um, yeah, leave me a comment. Let me know which is your favorite. If you are uh, into modern um, slip joints or traditional slip joints or both, or if you're just not a slip joint person, there are those out there for sure that just don't really like slip joints at all, and that's fine uh, if you're one of those. Um, yeah, that's it. You guys are awesome. Please like the video before you head out. That would make me happy, and I'll see you soon.